Well, good morning. Today is the 17th of August, Tuesday morning. Good to be with you here at Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana. I'm Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor. The title for our meditation today is Rain on Water. And the reading is from Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 3 to 8. St. Paul writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given to us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. On several occasions here in the past four or five weeks, I've had to run in the rain. I don't really mind that a whole lot, especially here in the summer like this. It's actually rather refreshing. The rain is, is really has been welcome. In fact, the last couple of weeks we've been so dry, I would have liked to have had some rain. Um, but I think of, there were three times here not so long back that I was running and I saw homes or a church where they had pre-programmed watering. They had an irrigation system in. And I was running in the rain, and those irrigation waters were being sprayed on the lawn as well. Um, there's one house that I run by every day, and there were a couple of times as I was running by there, I was, it was raining cats and dogs, and they were irrigating their lawn. And I thought to myself, well, what a waste. Um, I'm sure that that's all set on a timer and that it waters automatically. The owners really don't control that, but it just seemed like a waste to me. The system doesn't know or care that it's raining and that it's pouring outside. It just does what it's programmed to do. It waters the lawn. On the corner of um, Mel Smith and Grantline Road, there's a church, Church on the Rock, and they have a similar system with a similar result. Whether it's sunny out or whether it's raining cats and dogs, their irrigation system comes on and the sprinklers do what they're designed to do. And whenever I witness those things, I just sort of shake my head as I run by and I think, what a waste of water. And I know that that extra water is just going to run off and it's not going to really do any harm. But I also realize that they're going to have to pay for the water bill and because they live out where I do, we not only pay the water bill, but we also have to pay New Albany utilities, municipal utilities, for the sewer rate. And the sewer rates are high out on our end of town. They're high, and they're based on our water usage. So the more water we use, the higher the sewer bill, too. Seems like a waste, right? In our text today, St. Paul uses the word lavished when he talks about the grace of God in Christ Jesus. It's the same word that St. John uses in 1 John chapter 3. Both of them use that word lavished when they talk about the fact that God has poured out on his people so much grace that it just sort of runs off on us. It's an abundance of spiritual blessing and spiritual gifts that seem extravagant and costly. And they are. See, God could certainly have done less for us, right? He could have certainly done something less for us. He could have made us jump through all kinds of hoops and require all of us to make certain sacrifices. Most of the pagan religions in the world have such requirements. He could have offered us a half measure, something less than eternal, something less than bliss. He could have abandoned humanity altogether. He could have just said, I wash my hands of these creatures, and he could have gone to some other planet out there in the universe and started all over again. But that's not who he is. That's not his way. God is love. And in his love for the creatures that he made, he could not hold himself back. 
He could not just watch us die physically and spiritually and write us off. It's not who he is. It's not how he is. He could not just abandon us, and he could not give us anything less than his absolute best. So he sent to us his very own son, knowing what the world would do to him, what they would say about him, what they would think of him. And he poured his grace out upon us, and it'll never be any different than that, because that's the way God is. St. Paul says that God did all of this according to his pleasure and his will. God could not have done it any other way, would not have done it any other way. Because that's how he is, that's who he is. He created us, he redeemed us, and to this day sanctifies us in Christ Jesus in order that we may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. He pours it out on us in superabundance, having paid a great price for us. He is not willing just to lay us aside. He is not willing to just abandon us. He knows how we are. He knows who we are, but he loves us. And so that gospel comes out again and again. God so loved the world that, what? He gave us his very best. It's certainly more than we deserve. It's more than he had to do. And it's more than you and I could ever understand or pay back. But what we do as the people of God is we rejoice that God already saw, foresaw, that you and I were to be his people. And he saw to it that you and I came to know Christ Jesus and the gift that we have in him. And he poured that out on us. He simply wants us to respond to his love with love for him. He wants us to be in relationship with him as a perfect father would love his perfect children. It's like the rain on top of the watering that's going on through the irrigation pipes. When I see that rain falling down and the irrigation going on, well, I'm sort of amazed at that overabundance. It seems extravagant. It almost seems wasteful. And yet St. Paul says, and St. John, they agree. They say, yeah, he lavished it on us. He gives us more than we need. Certainly gives us more than we deserve. But he does it so that we might flourish in his love and produce rich and abundant fruit. And he does that all for Jesus' sake, does it all because of his great love for us. And so as you enter your day today, keep that in mind, that the Lord loves you lavishly. He loves you in superabundance. He gives you more than you deserve because he loves you more than you deserve. But he does it because he's your maker, he's your redeemer. And he's the one who sanctifies you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Fathers, we come before you today. We realize that you have poured it out on us, that you pour out your love on us, that you pour out on us forgiveness, that you treat us in ways that we do not deserve and could never repay you for. You do it because of your great love for us. And we pray that our love for you might be the response. Father, we know that we fail you at times, and we know that we bring you sorrow. But we pray that every time you would dust us off, stand us up, put us back on the right path, forgive us, and make us your people. Keep us as the apple of your eye. Grant us your grace and your help in this week. Point us in the right direction and enable us to do your will. All these things we ask through the merits and the mercies of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would remind you that this coming Sunday is when we are going to celebrate Pastor Wood's 25th anniversary of ordination and his 20th year here at Grace. Um, I know the deadline was yesterday, but if you didn't yet sign up and RSVP so we know that you're coming, do that today. You can either do it online right now or you can call Karen at the office, but today has to be the hard and fast deadline because... I got to know how much 
how much meatloaf to make for all y'all. So come and enjoy that. If you're not able to come, then send Pastor a note. Send him a card, maybe a gift card as well. Just let him know how much you appreciate his ministry amongst us. So that's coming up. We'll, we'll have a special order of service in late service, and then we'll have a, a meal, and we'll have some testimonials um, in the gym right after that. Um, would remind you also that Grace on Wednesday kicks in tomorrow night, Wednesday the 18th, and uh, supper's at 5.30. Tomorrow night is the family night. It's our kickoff. We haven't had Grace on Wednesday in like, what, I'd say 14 months, 15 months, something like that. So we want to sort of kick it off with a celebration. We'll do some special things, have the devotion skits, things that, that both adults and children will enjoy. So come and enjoy that with us. And then next week, the 25th, everything kicks off as normal. Classes for three-year-olds all the way to the adults, um, including a, a lifelike class on Romans that uh, is going to be taught. And then um, we are again, supper's at 5.30 and class is 6 to 7, or till 7.30. So God bless you all, and we'll talk again next week. Bye-bye.